again and welcome to Man's Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And wow, is it nice out. Oh, 51. it's lovely. I asked Google, hey Google, you know, oops, sorry, don't want my phone to answer me. <laughs> um, you know, what's the temperature? And when I left the house, it was 51. So I would, and it's funny, I was just asking the guys here, because I'm pretty sure this was the week that they posted that you couldn't park downtown or be careful parking downtown because they were going to do snow removal and oh, there wow. would be signs posted. And I get downtown and I'm like, there's no snow. It's 51 degrees. It's like, awesome. Mid-March. I mean, I wouldn't mind one last nor'easter. This last but one was you, gorgeous you with the it's, big cl- It's not yeah. going to last more than a week. No, you know, like, exactly. Why would yes. you even think about removing snow? I don't know, man. Sometimes I just look at what the city's doing and I'm I, like, well, I, why? It's like they have a checklist. Oh, we have snow, so we must plan to disrupt parking. And, I mean, but I, it's, I'm not a big fan of like being like whenever they're trying to do something, we criticize them as well. But it but is, but seems silly. It did occur to me as I was walking here. I was like, you know what part of the problem is, I think, is... I was reading this article this morning. So police departments across America, including the FBI and police, are now using like the secret, I forget what it was called, SUMEX or something, to, yeah, social media uh, infiltration, something. So anyway, it's a software program that they're using to circumvent the Fourth Amendment, right? To spy <laughs> on Americans by using their social media. Now, everything I pu- post, I post publicly. Right. So, you know, I'm sure I'm on the enemies of the state oh, list. Anyway. But here's my point. I was also watching these congressional hearings and Fauci was asking some guy and the guy from Pfizer was there and some person from HHS was there and every single clip, They refuse to answer the questions, you know, and then they get to that stage where they're like, yes or no, yes or no, (laughs) right? And they're still not answering. And I was like, look, if we're at this stage where the government is spying on all these anti-government people because we're anti-government because you're f***ing up. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, couldn't you maybe in this pool start to go, what could we do? What could we actually do? What are some of the reforms these people are asking about? What is the truth that needs to come out? You know, I was interviewed by the New York Sun yesterday about, because I guess Trump's doing something at Waco. And they were like, uh, so he's doing his first presidential rally in, in Waco, Waco on Saturday. Because there was new information released about Waco, I think. So, so I was like, oh, so, you know, so I was talking to the reporter and, you know, and she was asking about Waco and, you know, I, actually when she pinged me, I was like, oh, I should go read up again. Right, this like, is that like was a while ago. 1993. It was before I'd even immigrated. I have followed it over the mm. years and certainly done my own research and have my own opinions. The government murdered 76 yep, people. Yep. They did things like play nonstop yep. over speakers. The song, these boots were made for walking yep. and they'll walk all over you. Now, I don't know, that is not the government I want right. to right. fund. So then I was like, oh, did anyone, did one person, one person from the government go to jail or I don't know, Mm-mm. minimally lose their pension Mm-mm. for murdering 76 Mm-mm. men, women and children? No, of course not. No, so I'm like, okay, you know what, government, this is why we hate you. So C- clean up. On the same thread, I'm watching Tucker Carlson last night because it's like the only bit that we try to watch because there's always something interesting. And they're still talking about the new videos released From- about January 6th, right? And um, they were talking about how the prosecutor wants to indict anywhere from 800 to 1,200 more people than they've already indicted (laughs) from this incident. And I'm like, okay. And they're talking about it. And they're talking about how the the mainstream news, the news, which isn't news, how they just continue to like blatant lies. And they they go to a clip. And I think it was Joe Scarborough, MSNBC. And they're like, talking about the guy with the horns, right? <laughs> the Who's, shaman. The shaman, who is walking around with all the Capitol Police. And they are saying on the news that, well, they're saying he did, he was peaceful, but here he is going through a broken window. And there's this video of somebody breaking the window, right? Not him. him. 
And then you see the video when he entered walking. I mean, he he's noticeable. He's got the helmet with the, the thing with the horns. <laughs> and it's like what they can't, they're literally saying, look, he's doing this. And it's not him. Okay, so, so one of the stories I know that came out of J6 that still seems. So, so the way propaganda <laughs> works, and for folks back home, because we both understand. So how propaganda works is if you can tell the big lie mm. at the start, then you've basically set an anchor that most people will believe. Yep. A historic example of that is that everyone thought, Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Did not. Right. The terrorists weren't from his country. It was nothing to do with nothing. They wanted to go with, to war with yeah, Iraq, yep. so they certainly used it as an excuse. But if you poll to this day, Americans, about 70% of people Still will think say there was weapons of mass destruction. That there, there was weapons of mass destruction and that they somehow had something to do with 9-11. Um, so when you look at the J6 stuff, there's a story floating around that some police officer got nobody murdered. Nobody was murdered. Nobody. No, nobody died. Well, actually, there, there was, was one person. Uh, Ashley Bailey got right. shot for no reason. I actually looked at the footage. She was going she's through a window. She was a little lady. threatening to anybody. Um, I think she was like an ex-service ex Ex-military, yeah. Like, you but know. She, but no police officer were killed. January 6th. So there was None. one Capitol Police guy who died the next day of like a stroke a or stroke, something. And they and tried then they to say he was, he was bashed, murdered. Right. Because they, they're so trying anyway. to say he was bashed in the head with a fire extinguisher, even though there's video that shows him after the, that point in time. And he's obviously not bashed in the head. So maybe what people can do, because I'm genuinely like, I'm at my wits end, man. I'm just like. <laughs> it's boggling how. Ah, and I'm like, so can everyone just take a chill pill and maybe go. Uh, maybe I don't have the full story. So if you're like, oh, I think J6 was this, or I think it was this, yeah. it was probably a little bit yep. of both. People should not have been breaking windows and no. storming into the building. But then again, but people then, shouldn't get arrested because they happen to walk in with the crowd. Right. I mean, so did you, I don't know if you saw the NBC uh, piece that came out last night. So the, it's the 11 part series on the mm, Free State Project. No, I didn't Project see it anymore, Free State yeah. Movement. And they had, for their special guest, they had Stephen Nass. Okay. And uh, he is a chef and owner of Independence Inn. Okay. Super great guy. It was a really good episode. It's like the last one. And there's this beautiful scene with uh, Alu Axelman, who's one of our top activists, who's just had a baby. Beautiful little bubba. And he's like sitting with the baby. And it's a really moving little scene, right? And he clearly is joking and he's like well actually this is like my reb uh, rebel baby or something because uh you know he was born on january 6th it's my insurrection baby it's clearly a joke of course the interviewers oh nbc are all like so you guys are all pro insurrection right it's like, and it's like oh my god just stop i saw um i don't remember what it was on if it, it wasn't on tucker it was on something else and there were two gentlemen on one side of the table and pierce morgan on the other and they were talking about um the vaccine and everything and he was really interesting to watch because he goes hey I got it wrong. Like, he was like, no, so here's the way, let me tell you how I went. And he started going through like this, this, and then, ooh, wait, and then more, and ooh, wait. So it was interesting that there are people who who can stop and go, wait a minute, I think I'm, I, I think now I can see that this isn't correct. But it is interesting when you say this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna transition here, look at this transitioning. Um, you talk about the big lie, yep. and how if you say something, and if you keep saying it's a certain thing, then it is. And then and people, people start to believe people it. People believe it because their it's minds just the way are it's like we're oh, It's almost like we're an open sponge and as soon as you put something in it, it's hard to change it. Yep. So um, if you didn't see the news, uh, Mayor Joyce Craig has decided not to run for re-election. She made that announcement last week. Um, she put out this press release and I read it and I thought, I'm sorry, what city do you, what? Because these are the things that she says. Manchester is undergoing historic growth and during my time as mayor, the city has attracted hundreds of small businesses, thousands of high paying jobs and an innovative biofabrication industry. One, none of that has anything to do with the government the mayor, in Manchester yeah. or the mayor. And probably a lot of those small businesses are because, um, because of COVID and the shutdowns and everything. She also says, Today, Manchester has one of the housing, hottest housing markets in the country. I don't know about that. 
Um, well, if they do, it's because of the influx of free staters. Or you're welcome. Or people just flooding to New Hampshire. All sorts of <laughs> well, people. Well, yeah, because people are looking during COVID. And they were like, "Let's go there." They're not crazy. Yeah. Um, with a vibrant downtown, beautiful parks and green spaces, and thousands of new housing units in development. Hmm. I thought, I don't know if I'd call downtown Manchester vibrant. I mean, I did pass three homeless people. So there's vibrancy in, in sorts. <laughs> then she says, um, since taking office, they focused on public safety, expanding our police force, decreasing violent crime by 38% and overall crime by 12%. I don't know if anybody living in Manchester buys that. Then... I don't this, know, and of course we can't vet any well, of then, that information. Well, if they know, if people stop reporting public. crime, then the crime statistics go down. And if they start categorizing, who knows what those numbers are based on? Then this one killed me. Okay. This one just kills me. <laughs> when I took office, the Manchester School District needed a clear set of priorities to improve student achievement. So she goes on to say, over the past six years, we decreased class sizes because three thousand students left the school district. Um, implemented new curriculum, increased student access to technology, and raised the starting pay to attract the best new teachers to our district. Just want to let people know that when we're talking about improving student um, achievement, Ooh, okay. oops, that doesn't actually match the numbers. So uh, you could do your numbers, no, that's but I'm going to say the following. So my understanding is that the school budget has gone up 46%. And the current proficiency for English and arts is 26? Um, I don't have a combined one. Okay. Oh, English, language, and arts, 28%. 28, and math, I think, is 40, 16. 16. So, uh, yeah. So, right now, because, like, she's been a mayor for, what, six years or whatever, give or take, maybe it's seven now. So, in 2018, the math proficiency scores were 23%. 23% of kids in Manchester are proficient in math. That's like less than one in four. Look, I'm not great at math, but... Uh, I would I think could. I'm better than that. So <laughs> it, this is it. I, I wrote down 2018-19. They didn't do 2020 because COVID. Because they were just like, they were oh, at home. no one needs to 21, learn. Don't 22. listen to those crazy people who say if you so shut down the is, schools, you'll make kids dumb. Keep in mind, in, the priorities were to improve student achievement. So in math went 23%. 23%, 14%, 16%. So it did improve by 2%. It improved therefore. since <laughs> the lowest point, but it's still 7 percentage points oh, yeah. down. No, it's terrible. Then the, and the language arts, it went 33, 32, 27, 28. So there is absolutely no coherent thinking individual who thinks that those proficiency scores over the past five years have improved student achievements. The priorities in the city have never been to improve student achievements. So I actually tweeted at uh, Mayor Craig this morning. <laughs> I'm going to assume she's not going to respond back because she never does, but that be it as, as it may. My question is, so we know, and the data is there, to 100% prove that it at this stage does not matter how much money you spend right. per student, the outcomes are not improving. So there's no amount of money we can throw at this part of problem that is actually going to solve the fact that kids either don't want to, cannot learn. There's something. There's there's something here that we actually have Agreed. to unpack. And I would say it is we need to return to individualism so we can look at every kid and go, what do you need, kid, in order for right. you to learn and excel and right. empower and be great right okay um so if it's gone up 46 percent the teachers are only getting cost of living raises where's the so money going my question is where is the money going more and counselors more more layers of bureaucracy Christy, more, more red tape yep the the administrators i mean you know what if i was a teacher uh, striking or some I'm not encouraging anyone to no, strike. No, but, but I mean they're not the ones getting paid pay. the money to do the job. These people over here so, are making all I the mean money. and they're making bang. And there's like multiple principals and vice but, principals and all this stuff in every little school. So this was one of my take and this is this is why these scores are so bad. And you talk about it all the time that if you can't read, 
or maybe Victoria says, somebody says it. If you can't read, you can't learn because you, that's, you need to be able to read. Well, not only that, to go back to that big lie notion for a second, something I'm deeply concerned about is if you don't have base knowledge, like if you don't know stuff and you only know how to look up stuff, it is very easy to manipulate you. To just fake your so, way. So by way of example, when COVID happened and they were like, there's no such thing as natural immunity for this virus. I was like, that is a giant red flag because I understand right. you, basic virology. Right. But, Without being a scientist, you just... Uh, but if we didn't have that knowledge base and you're going to the internet and they, and they are literally changing the definitions of words like vaccine, yeah. which is something they did numerous times then if you're you know dummy on your phone and you're like oh i want to argue with carla what's her sources she's talking nonsense and then you like go and you're like but it says here a vaccine is something that does this this and this and you're like yeah but two days ago it didn't say that yeah. and you have to understand it's not because science it's because someone is manipulating yep. you so this was in an article um, in the Union Leader from October of 21, so a year and a half ago, when those scores came out, and the headline, test scores for Manchester schools, they aren't good. But what it was interesting is, there's this one article that I was, this one little paragraph, um, the 19% at that point that they were talking about um, proficiency in reading, it says, 19% um, is the percentage of Manchester third graders who tested proficient in reading. This is in 2021. The score is key because according to city health director Anna Thomas, third grade is when students transition from learning to read to reading to learn. She said that in an interview two years ago and cited data for 2017, at that time, 28% were at reading level. So while Joyce Craig was mayor, they went from 28% to 19% in third grade reading levels. If third grade I mean, I wouldn't run for mayor with her track record no, either. No, and I definitely wouldn't run for governor. Oh, um, You screwed up Manchester. Rushed, I love John yeah. DePietro's meme of her with the city burning down behind it <laughs> and her thing that says, my job here is done. Uh, but I mean, come on, I will go corner to corner in the state to tell people how terrible of a mayor Joyce Craig was. Um, on the Fauci thing, because I'm watching the time and we should, we should have time to talk about it. So I saw this other thing last night, again, uh, on YouTube. It wasn't, I forgot what it was on. And there's this t thing that, did you know that back in 2021, Fauci and his little entourage literally went door to door in neighborhoods in DC to try to get people to take the vaccine. And they show these clips and they were amazing because they're they're saying, well, we're going to the poorest of the poor and these are the, you know. I think it was part of a PBS it documentary was. to make Fauci look, look good. good and then someone and they go to this, some of these other And clips. they're like, they're, we're going to the worst of the worst neighborhoods and these are, you know, low information people and they don't have good health care and they're, you know, they we need to go help them. And they go to this door and this guy comes out and he's like, yeah, no, I'm not taking that. You you haven't told me what, it, I don't think it does what it, it does. does. You you passed it through with no with no testing and this and that. And he goes, and the fact that you want to pay me to take it makes me double wonder. And then they go off to this other house that, um, cause then they're like, oh, okay, we're done now. And then they leave and they go to this other woman and she's like, so wait, it doesn't prevent the spread and it doesn't, doesn't stop, stop transmission. It doesn't cure it and it doesn't do this. Why? Why would I take this again? And literally, like, the, and it was just amazing that, you know, I think it was Tucker Carlson because he was saying, you know, I got all these super educated, high, you know, wealthy people in this in the in the rich part of town right. who are like, stick it in me, stick it in me. He goes, and you've got the poor, less educated, you know, people that you would think don't know better, all questioning well, authority, now of course, which was uh, good to now see. Now, of course, the elites will say, but you're just too dumb to know. Well, apparently they weren't and, that dumb. And, you know, in return, I would say, well, I have a lot of degrees and I'm not dumb and I did my own research and I don't believe your big lie. So there was a UNH poll out last week um, about parental rights. Yeah. And um, so do you guys realize how far we have come? <laughs> Since 2015, that, this has all happened that, like in- Like, like, like look, let's just step back and look at it from like a macro perspective. The battle that is currently going on, although it is very much uh, caught up in sort of the trans rights debate, I think that's very clever for anyone who's trying to actually absurd 
parental yeah. authority because you make it about an issue that's uncomfortable to right. talk about. You make it about an issue that people who aren't in that milieu don't really care right. about. They're kind of like, you do you, just leave our kids out of it. Right. But the real debate that is currently happening is the government is saying, we think we yep. own your children. So this and people are saying, hey, how about no? So here's the, here's the questions. Um, right to be informed of and provide consent to any medical procedure or treatment to be performed on their minor child. Can I also just say, because I did make this point on my NBC thing, because I don't know why, like I went in there <laughs> on an episode about Porkfest and Free State Project and, and, they and went me off on personally, and the first question was about trans rights. I don't understand it, fine, I handled it. But I just had happened to read that morning that in New Hampshire, you may not use a tanning bed, no. even with parental no, until consent. Until you're over 18. I was a legislator when we voted on that. Okay, so the but, right. But they want to, like, I don't know, so, like, right, change you forever. Those polls. Without anyone saying. Say, hmm. Right to be informed of and provide consent for medical treatment on minor child. 79% agree. Right to inspect any instructional material used as part of educational curriculum for their minor child. 50% agree. And this is all, not just parents. Is this New Hampshire specific the, or national? This is New Hampshire. Okay. Right to be told if their minor child is being identified by a different name than what their child was enrolled in school in. 59% agree. Right to be told if their minor child is being identified by the school as being of a different gender than when their child enrolled. 58% agree. Right to opt their minor child out of health or sex education, only 38%. But now, when you talk to, when you look at just the parents only, um, uh, there's a bill, HB 10, which they actually voted on today. Um, and that got tabled, right? Yep. 58% of parents agreed with this legislation establishing a parental bill of rights. Um, of parents questioned, um, wanting, to, feeling they should be notified if their ch child is identifying as a different gender. 64% of parents said yes. Um, and voters say parents should um, be notified. 69%. It's not, it's not a minority. So this morning, um, we're in crossover week, so their house is in session today, Wednesday, and tomorrow again Thursday because they have to act on all bills. Yes. So long days. Thank you to everybody who does serve up there. Um, HB 10 was the Parental Bill of Rights. Um, it had a floor amendment. The floor amendment failed, which was interesting because the floor amendment actually, uh, from what I can understand, said, yes, the parents should be notified about things of uh, like this. But then if the school is, if the child is in any way inferring that they're in danger because of this information, the school is required to act on it. Right now, the school is not required to act on it. Hmm. So it was actually... Uh, firming up both sides, protecting the child more, but also informing the parents. So the amendment failed, which I was surprised because hmm. you would thought the Democrats would have wanted that, but they obviously didn't. Then the bill came up, um, ought to pass without the amendment and it failed. It was like 192 to 185, shame on the four Republicans that voted not to give parents any rights over their children. Um, and then they, there was a move to table, which was a tie, and Laura, Representative Lori Sanborn from Bedward was at the gavel, and she voted to table, so she broke the okay. tie, and it was tabled. And just so, for folks back home, tabled means it can be worked on and then come back next year No, for a table vote, means or? it's like literally sitting on the table, and at any point, somebody can move to take it off the table. So I this see. is my what I assume okay. will happen. Now, before, What's the other word then? Um, when interim they, study. Oh, or okay. retain. Retain. Retain means they're about. really working. Interim study is a polite way to say you're probably killing yeah. it. Um, but so when you table something, the reason they tabled it is they, I'm guessing, the reason the Republicans tabled it is because they didn't have the votes to stop an ITL, mm. to stop the bill from dying. So they put it on the table. Because we're at crossover, up until the end of tomorrow, which at, just so you know, if you're in the New Hampshire house and it, the clock passes midnight, that doesn't count. The day midnight. To, oh, it's still Friday the same doesn't day. come till they recess on uh, Thursday. Okay. That's just the way it works. So, up until that crossover point, it just takes a simple majority to take something off the table. After crossover, it yeah. takes two thirds to take that off the table. So, being that there's another full half a day of session today and a full day, there's many, and of many course, hours. There's a really close. It's minority, like this. It is literally so it's, like it's this. It's kind of like and who, who's showing I, up? Go, go, go. I can bet a beer. 
that the, the w if I were in charge, literally they are always watching the roll call votes. Always. As soon as there is a chance yep. that there are enough votes to pass it, they will immediately take it off the table. There is no debate on a tabling motion and so, it'll come off and they'll vote. I, I haven't actually read this bill. Are there like bananas add-ons from other no, sides? No, because no. that's also something I no, find this deeply is just, frustrating. From what I'm, so from on what, the face of it, so I, I don't want to put words no. in your mouth, but on the face of it, so we're saying, here's a bill where we're just saying, hey, government, you don't own our kids. Basically. And if you do anything, we would like to know about it. And half of the legislature is voting against that. So I'm at the stage where I'm going to just start flipping everything, right? Like everyone criticizes me and says crazy things that Bill Marsh was on the NBC show. And I was like, he was literally advocating for arresting school children and uh, force jabbing people. And I'm like, so that dude, that is insane. Yeah. That is like dangerous and extreme. But God forbid you want to let parents but know I what their kids are doing. But I get cold, dangerous, and extreme. Yes. And I'm like, but I don't want to force jab anyone. Nope. And I just think that kids kind of belong to their parents yeah. until they're 18. So the summary is. And if they don't belong to their parents. Who do they and they're belong not self-actualized. Uh, who do they belong to? Right. Because if you're gonna make the argument to me that we are, so so this lady from NBC actually did make that argument. She was kind of like, uh, I mean, she seemed shocked that I thought I was born free. I was like, what are you? What are, what are, like, how are you how, born, how, right? How, you know, so again, you know, like I think we have to start looking at these things from far away and going, this is crazy. Yeah. Like why are, why are the Democrats voting against this? Why are because, We've been pitted against each other, but it's not actually, it's politics. It's yep. not in anyone's best interest. Um, so can we start fixing these problems, please? Before we run out of time, I want to let people know that if you're interested in supporting the Republican candidate in the special election for Ward 6 Alderman, that special election's on Tuesday, May 9th. Uh, Chrissy Cantor, who is the owner of Chill Spa over there in Ward 6, is having a fundraiser next Tuesday night. So that's, I think, the 28th at the Dairyfield Country Club. It's just 20 bucks. Um, come on over, meet the candidate, oh, you know, yeah. be supportive. It's a great thing. Um, I'm that's sure you Tuesday? could. Yep, I'm sure you can. I think it's Chrissy for Manchester. But if you search Chrissy, C-R-I-S-S-Y, Cantor, K-A-N-T-O-R, um, Manchester, I'm sure you can find it on online um that's all we have time for today hopefully the warm weather keeps up and spring will be creeping up and we can start doing some gardening um otherwise have a wonderful weekend and we will be back next week take care guys bye